All right, Derby students, we have something special for you guys. Uh, this is a special challenge. Uh, we did a cardboard bridge building competition during the last couple of weeks. Uh, but what we're releasing to you is a little bit different. So you're going to want to pay close attention to the details uh, for this challenge. This is something that we are starting this week. But we do not expect you to build anything. We're going to be taking you through the design process. And this is just the first week. We are defining the problem. Let's get started. We have a cardboard bridge, and this is the design brief. This is us stating the problem to you so that you can uh, prepare for this challenge. There are some bridges I have pictures of, students' designs from the past. These designs are different than what you will be doing. Uh, but this might give you an idea of what you're working towards. Uh, number one, they're a lot wider, okay? This bridge here is much wider than what you're going to be designing. The other thing is, is that these bridges, they wanted to make sure their bridges were strong and light. You just want to make sure that your bridges are strong enough. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit more. But notice this bridge uses the edge of the table. Okay, Their bridge actually goes beneath the edge of the table. This bridge also goes beneath the edge of the table. But notice that the part that goes beneath the edge of the table does not go up to the actual table. Okay, So that might play a role. Also notice that there are geometric shapes in this bridge. Uh, it has triangles and rectangles, and, uh, and the cardboard is oriented in different directions, something they might consider. This bridge is a solid piece of cardboard. Okay, It's lots of layers of cardboard stuck together. Notice that the cardboard is vertical, where this bridge is also a lot of pieces of cardboard stuck together, but in this bridge, the cardboard's laying flat, not vertical. So that might play a role into how strong the bridge is. This bridge is a triangle. If you would look down the end of the bridge, you would see that there's a triangle shape going down the length of the bridge. Now, this bridge would not work for our competition because it doesn't have a flat surface in the middle of it that you could stand on. This bridge is a cool design, uh, but it would have to be modified to be able to work in our challenge. Uh, another bridge, this bridge is not a triangle. This is more of a, a square or rectangle bridge and the pieces sort of interlock together. There's a lot of air in this bridge. Uh, this is a nice light bridge. Uh, remember, you don't have to worry too much about being light. Your focus is on being strong, but something to consider. Uh, this is another bridge where they use their materials uh, to be very light. Uh, and you can see that they use different shapes and orientations of the cardboard. Some are laying flat, some are laying vertical. Uh, so when you look at these, you should be noticing uh, what makes a bridge look strong. All right, so the problem that we have for you, you are to design and build a bridge to span a 60 centimeter gap. Now 60 centimeters is really close to 23 and 5 eighths. Okay, so if you design, if you don't have something that you can measure 60 centimeters with, 23 and 5 eighths will work and it needs to be strong enough to hold you okay that's your goal you want to build a bridge strong enough to hold you this is the frame that we are going to be testing on. now we're going to be showing you how to make these uh, this is made with one two by four 
and 16 screws. In addition to the possibility of you making one, we plan on having a couple of them available at the school that you might be able to borrow and maybe we're going to leave one so if you wanted to go and test your bridge at the school, you could also do that. Um, but if you want to have one for yourself so you can test at your home easily, um, oh, I'm going to give you directions on how to make this. So the way this works is your bridge is going to sit right there on this br bridge testing fixture. Okay? And then you're going to stand right in the center of that to see if your bridge is strong enough to hold you. Okay? Limitations. The bridge may only be made out of single corrugated cardboard and white glue. Now white glue has a lot of different names. One of the common types is Elmer's glue. So if it's white and it's a standard glue, you can use it. I've seen it called tacky glue. Rules of 10. Your bridge may not be more than 10 centimeters tall. So picture I make a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square frame that has a hole on the inside. And I put your bridge through it. Your bridge should be able to fit through that frame that has a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter hole. Also, the bridge may not be more than 10 centimeters wide. Okay, so in theory, you could make it 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters perfect square. The third rule of 10 is that your bridge may not be more than 10 centimeters longer than the gap. Okay, the gap from one side to the other. The gap is 60 centimeters which means that your bridge can have 10 centimeters extra over here and 10 centimeters extra over here for a total bridge length of 80 centimeters. The fourth rule of 10 is that your bridge must have a spot in the center at the top of your bridge that's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This surface is for you to be able to stand on to test how strong your bridge is at the end. Your bridge can only be 10 centimeters tall. However, you are allowed to go three centimeters beneath the surface of the fixture. Okay, so your bridge normally would sit on top of the fixture, but if you want to design your bridge so it uses the edges of the fixture as well, you can go three centimeters down. And these pictures demonstrate that. In the first picture, here, the bridge is just sitting on top of the fixture. In the second picture here, the bridge is sitting on top of the fixture, but it also has a portion of the bridge that goes beneath the top of the fixture so that you can use the inside edges of the fixture to add strength to your bridge. You may only use glue on the edges of your cardboard. Okay? You're not allowed to take and smear the whole side of the cardboard with glue and then stick two pieces of cardboard. The reason for this is it's wasteful. Uh, you don't need that much glue. White glue is extremely strong, um, but you're not going to want to smear glue all over the side and make like a cardboard glue Oreo cookie here. Those are the limitations on your bridge. So, what is going to be your next step? You're going to want to do some research and analysis. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to look into what safety techniques you use to build one of these. Uh, you're going to want to look into what makes strong structural shapes and specifically, what makes cardboard strong? How do you lay cardboard to get the most strength out of it? And you're going to want to keep your bridge symmetrical. If you have one side that's much stronger than the other, that side's going to be the one that fails first. So you're going to want to keep both sides equally strong. So you're going to want to find some ideas from different places other than this PowerPoint. You can look to slides, uh, examples that I show you, uh, books. You might find a book that on structural shapes and bridges, magazines, 
other classmates, parents, other adults. You can search the internet and there are even some simulations out there you might be able to try. So when you're going to be coming up with possible solutions, you're going to want to look at sketches of bridges and you're going to want to start sketching what sort of bridge you want to build. These are really nice sketches of a possible bridge. Notice that they're using structural shapes here. There's a front view, there's a top view, and uh, you can sort of understand what they had envisioned with these two views. Experimentation. You're going to want to start thinking about structural shapes. How to bend or glue cardboard together so that it's really strong. Um, you're going to want to think of different designs for your front view. You're going to want to think of different designs for your top view. You're going to want to think about where to put supports to make your bridge the strongest that it can be. And you're going to want to start thinking about the size of your bridge. All right, does it make sense to have it the full height or full width? So your final solution. Your final solution should be strong. It needs to be at least 60 centimeters long and a maximum of 80 centimeters long. It needs to be less than 10 centimeters high and less than 10 centimeters wide. It has to have a flat surface to hold the weight, which is you. So you're gonna wanna make sure that this bridge is strong enough to hold your weight. We really hope you'll enjoy this bridge competition and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Um.